Hey guys, I'm Sean Allen, your Houston area Acura guy, and I wanted to give you a little quick video about how to use the touchpad interface in the brand new RDX. The touchpad interface has some really, really great technology in it. It's new to the Acura lineup, and it is a little bit better than some of the competitors offers. Now, one of the reasons that they're doing the touchpad interface on these vehicles is versus the touchscreen, where if you were driving, this is you know your view of the road. You had to look down Take your eyes completely off the road you can't even see what's going on in the window anymore to operate your touch screen with the touchpad interface the screen is in line with your view so i barely have to adjust my eyes to see everything that's going on i still have a full view of the road and it's a lot safer to use i'm going to be giving you a little tutorial on how everything operates so here is the 10.2 inch high resolution display you can see it is split into two different screens. Essentially, you have your left side, which will have a lot of your apps and different information. The right side can cycle through a few different apps as well. That way you can have your navigation up and you can still have your radio up. Uh, down below here is your touchpad interface. This is, will control the main screen here. This will control the side screen. This button will quickly cycle through the different apps on the side screen. This is obviously the home button for the main screen and this is the back button so if you go into an app you can hit back without going all the way to the back screen now a couple things that people kind of get confused it's not like a laptop touchpad where let's say you had your cursor here and you wanted to scroll to the right you just keep going like this it does not work like that so the way it will work is you see on the top left side of the screen you have the navigation all you do is you press the top left of the touchpad to have it correlate with each other. At the same time, let's say you want to activate Sirius Satellite Radio. It's towards the bottom right of the touchpad. So again, you will touch the bottom right of the touchpad. It's one to one. Just think of that as a tiny screen up there. You just press the button. What I talk about is the sidebar here and the home screen for the side screen here. That's going to correlate with the display up top here on this side here. Now ignore that little shutter, that's just because the frame rate of my camera and the display are not synced up. You will not see anything like that with your actual eyes. So a quick little tip on there, this home button will cycle through the display options up there. Same thing if you want to highlight a specific part, it's a one-to-one -one touch. So if I want to click the clock, I just press down on the bottom. If I want the navigation, I just click down towards the center. Very, very simple. A little quick intro into how to operate the actual touchpad. I'm going to get in depth on how the actual apps and features of the touchpad work. Okay everybody, now that we know how to use the touchpad interface, I'm going to get into the operation of some of the apps on this car. So I'm going to start off with the navigation. So here is the basic navigation screen. There's a lot you can do on it. Uh, first thing here, this is the up and down north map. You can press that to get a 3D view. It can zoom out or you can just do the top down view that most people are probably used to. This next one below it is the layers button. When you press that button, you can change if you want to show landmarks, show traffic, show points of interest, things that you just might want to check out while you're driving. Of, to the right is the up and the zoom in and zoom out function. If you want a closer view of where you're at, or if you want to spread it out, you can just press the negative sign. The menu button will give you some options that you can do with the menu. Uh, change the way the map looks, route preferences, if you want it to avoid tolls. If you don't care about that and you're fine with the toll, toll road, it'll help you there. You can also change if you want it and obviously miles, meters, however you like it. The explore button is a pretty cool feature. Uh, you can drop pins anywhere on the map. So if you want it to say, okay, I want to go right here give you a little pin and then tell you how to get to that specific point if you click right here uh, let me turn that off so I can actually show you how this works this just brings you back to your location on there so if I zoom out and I move around on the map I can quickly get back to where I am by pull, clicking the bottom right button let's get out of there 
Now I'm going to show you how to actually type in a location. You can click find here. You can browse different locations. You can add your home. You can set favorites. If you go to browse, that's where it's going to give you, you know, different food. If you want to find a gas station, ATM, travel, shopping nearby. This next one on the left, right is search. Now that's pretty interesting because it's going to give you a writing interface. So you can type in, let's say, Acura. It's going to say you did an A. a. Let's see a U. C. U. R. Let's say A. British pound. <laughs> British pound. Not quite. Anyways, that's how it works. You just type in exactly what you're looking for and then it will pull up the different information for you. The next thing I'm going to go over is how you connect your phone. Now before you even start messing with the interface, make sure you go into your settings and set your phone as discoverable. That way this will be able to pick it up. So first thing you're going to do is you're going to click and highlight the phone section. It's going to say no phone is connected. Then you'll highlight connect phone. After you do that, you'll go to connect new device. After that, it's going to search for your phone. I don't have my Bluetooth set up right now because I'm doing this video for you. Eventually, it will pick up your phone. You will just highlight it on the touchpad. You'll click on it. It's going to say, would you like to connect this phone? You'll set yes. After it takes a minute or so to connect, it will ask you a few questions. If you want to sync up your, uh, your contacts information, your GPS and stuff like that, just go ahead and hit yes on all of those different options and then your phone will be connected. Next thing to go over is how you do your audio controls. So with the Bluetooth audio, the first thing you want to do is actually connect your phone through Bluetooth, which I just showed you how. After you do that, your Pandora, your Spotify, whatever you're using will pop up here. FM and satellite radio work the same way. If you click on FM radio, this screen will pop up with the different radio stations available for you. On the bottom, you have your preset options here. You can add more favorites if you just click here and go to the number. Uh, to do the scanning, you just click scan. This will add all the different radio stations available to you. Station list up here will give you a drop down menu where you can cycle through if you want to change it to a different radio station that's been scanned and available to you. If you want to tune it yourself, you can click the tune button here. It's going to give you this little menu. You can use the left and the right to go through and find the radio station you want. You can also do the handwriting here. If you click on that, it will tell you to draw the numbers. So if I want 99.1, I'll just dial 99.1. Nine. 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 Oh, well, I hit One. backspace. You can also click up on the top to give you a keypad, which might be a little bit easier to use. So I'm going to erase that, and I'll just put 991, and then click Enter. And that's going to give me my sunny 99.1 in Houston very very easy to do. If I want to add a favorite I'll just click here. I can use the current station I'm on or I can pull up the station list and do it that way. A couple other things of note you have system update here if there's updates available and you're connected to a Wi-Fi connection all you do is click on that it's going to give you a connection to say do you want to do it wirelessly or use USB. If there's an update available you just pick however you want to add it to the vehicle. You also have your settings menu on the left side. You can cycle through all the different options available to you to your vehicle. If you want the lights to come on, when you open the car, if you want to have the car lock for you when you walk away, how you want the camera settings on the back, the sound settings, everything is going to be in here to change the operation of your vehicle. Now one thing I do want to show you, if you press and hold the home button, that's how the option will come up to rearrange how some of these are. If you want to take it off completely, you can just click on it. It'll say remove from the display, remove from home page. And there's a few other apps you can add as well. I just recommend really taking some time to play around with this. If there's anything else you need, leave it in the comments. I'll try and answer it for you. Maybe I'll just even add it to the video. Watching my video on how to operate the touchpad interface on the new RDX, 
I know it's pretty different from anything that Acuras had before, but once you know how to use it, it is a pretty simple operation. If there's anything I didn't get to that you really want to know, leave it in the comments. I'll try to answer it for you as best I can if it's something that you can do. If you're looking to take a car for a test drive, you're in the market for an Acura, my contact info is in the description of this video. Again, thank you so much, and if there's anything else you need to know, let me know.